Happy follow our Instagram. Hey my beautiful crafters, so in today's video, I am going to talk about Crystalic versus Epoxy. In all honesty guys, I didn't know how to make this video because usually people show their faces while doing a lot of blabbering. So let's start. I'm not sure if you guys have watched my 100 coats of Brighton, but this is the Tumblr and if you haven't watched, I'm going to put on a link at the top right hand corner so that it's easier for you guys to find the video. This tumbler is not fully cured yet. Whereas this tumbler, the yellow tumbler, is done years ago using epoxy. I have stopped using epoxy for I think about a year plus because I had allergy reactions. And to be honest, it took me quite a while to get a hang of using Crystal X. So if you guys are new to it or if you guys are looking into going onto the epoxy free path, then I hope you know that it, there will be a learning curve to this. On to epoxy now. So epoxy... Um, epoxy is a combination of a polymer hardener with resin and after application there's a chemical reaction that occurs and that chemical reaction is called curing and during curing VOC is released in the air and that's that smell that, that strong chemical smell that you smell when you are using epoxy and this is extremely toxic and thus why people use proper PPE, chemical gloves and masks while using epoxy. Whereas Brighton is water-based, that means it's eco-friendly and non-toxic, non-hazardous. Also, it has less than 1% VOC and contains no BPA. I know I said all that and it sounds so one-sided, right? But they definitely have pros and cons. And I do have bad days with Crystal Egg, just like how I do have bad days with Epoxy. And these are the challenges that I faced while using Epoxy last time. Cloudy surfaces, soft spots, fish eyes or dimples, waves, air bubbles, dusts, sticky surfaces, overheating while stirring, uneven surfaces and repelling. And like I said, I do have problems with crystal egg as well and these are a few examples of the problems i have orange peel vinyl peel bright tone repelling and tests bear in mind these are easy fix problems they say a picture speaks a thousand words and i'm not trying to be biased the picture really speaks for itself you really need everything in this picture just to make one coat on a tumbler with epoxy, however, you can do acrylic blanks and moulds. However, with crystallite, you can only do acrylic blanks. So onto the weight comparison, I am going to weigh the epoxy with, I think, around 3 to 4 coats. This is a 6 ounce double wall tumbler. And as you can see, epoxy tends to give this bulge at the top if your turner is not level and if you put too much so i hope this is a good comparison and i have another tumbler that is also done with epoxy a year ago if i'm not mistaken i'm going to do two tumblers from epoxy and two tumblers from crystal x so that it's more fair and this is my two crystal egg tumblers that I did 100 layers of bright tone and is not fully cured yet. Despite 100 coats of bright tone, it's not as bulky and it's not as thick compared to my epoxy tumbler. So I'm just going to wait now and I'm going to start with the epoxy tumbler. The weighing machine is measuring in ounce, so without further ado, let's start. Two 
the first epoxy tumbler is 4.9 ounce and that is roughly 138 grams. The second epoxy tumbler is also 4.9 ounce and it's 138 grams. And now we are going to compare it with 100 coats of Brighton. This one is not sanded down and it weighs 5.1 ounce which is 144 grams and this one is sanded down 10 times and it weighs 4 point, no, 5.0 ounce and it is 141 grams. So, if you can tell that there's actually a difference if you were to send it down, this is probably 5 coats of epoxy, 4.9 versus 100 coat of Brighton 5.0 and that is send it down. On to the drop test guys and we are going to start with 1 feet. Please bear in mind that the crystallite is not fully cured yet. If the drop did cause a chip and a crack, that means the seal has been compromised. So far, the epoxy survived the one feet drop. On to our crystallite tumbler. Same one feet drop. No damage like the epoxy tumbler. Two feet drop epoxy tumbler. Survive the two feet drop. Crystallite two feet drop. Survive as well. Epoxy tumbler three feet drop. Still no damage guys. Crystal like 3 feet drop. Still not a scratch. 4 feet epoxy tumbler. And after the 4th drop, you can see the tumbler is dented and also the surface of the tumbler is definitely scratched. 4 feet crystallite tumbler. So let's check this tumbler out. So far it's doing pretty well considering the fact that it's not fully cured. However, I think I see a tiny dent, but the surface is not scratched or broken. So that means the seal is not compromised. So I decided to do new drop tests using the other set of new tumblers because, I mean, nobody really drops tumblers four times right so i decided to just do one drop test at a pretty high height just to mimic a real drop in real life situation and please excuse my amateur editing and also this very poor lighting because it was extremely cloudy on my end and i couldn't find mr sun and this is the result for that one particular drop the crystallite tumbler is fine with no scratches and no dent and the epoxy tumbler is also scratch free and dent free i hope you guys know that this video is not to criticize epoxy users i was once an epoxy user myself and Epoxy is what brought me to this particular craft, but 
while doing all this my health kind of suffered as well so this video is really meant for people who's in search of alternative so that they can continue with their craft as well if you guys like this video please help me press the like button and if you guys haven't subscribed yet please feel free to subscribe bye Yeah, cry.